Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, where are two or more are gathered, he's promised to be here. So I'm looking forward to talking with you this morning. Um, and Robert, I feel sorry for Robert because I got to do this sermon at the uh, prison last week, and so he gets double whammy here. So, sorry, Robert. Oh, <laughs> he's back there with his thumbs up. <laughs> um, but before we get started, let's pray. Father, we sure enjoy getting to know you more. And it takes a little bit of study, a little bit of reading, a little bit of experience, faith, knowledge of you. And all the knowledge starts with you. So, Father, we just pray that as, as we talk about you today, the things that your son did here on earth, will you change our hearts to be more like you? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Help us see like you. Um, I, I told Bev this morning, and I actually told uh, the offenders last week that I, I actually did this sermon or talk um, because it was for me. So you guys just get to listen to me speaking to myself about this subject, okay? But I've always been fascinated with Christianity when I started learning about it and the way that we do things. And my eyes many times do not do me justice because I see things and I judge, I criticize, I look and I try to figure out what's going on with people and things and circumstances. And I don't like doing that. And so many times in my life, and especially working with college-age students out at Walla Walla, I'd have to say, Lord, help me see this student like you do, not the way I see him, but like you do. And believe it or not, if you have a prayer like that, it really helps. So I'm going to take you through a series of pictures at the beginning here. And when these pictures come up, all I want you to do is look at them. Let your eyes look at them and let your thoughts just think about what you're seeing, okay? And I'm gonna be talking about them and asking you questions, things like that. But just sit back and look at these pictures. Because I wanna to, to try to make a point here. This is a homeless lady. It looks like she's getting ready to eat something. I'm not sure what it is. Um, but we've all seen homeless people. And when you see homeless people, what goes through your mind? You know, are you looking at maybe, uh, why are they homeless? Uh, you maybe have a little bit of pity. Uh, do you maybe feel a little uncomfortable? And, and this lady isn't too bad. They've seen homeless people look a lot worse than that. But what are your thoughts when you're seeing with your eyes a person like this? Do you maybe see a need? And when you look at this lady, she's eating too. Do you think the same things when you see her compared to the first lady? Do you, do you feel pity for her? What are your eyes telling you about this situation? Do you, do you, do you, do you find that maybe... Uh, uh, that she needs help, that, that uh, this, is there a need here? Do you see the difference in the first picture and the second picture? Mm -hmm. When you compare these two ladies with your eyes, your eyes kind of are generating what you're thinking in a way, isn't it? When I see a homeless person, I do feel a little bit hurt in my heart. I, I wish there was something I could do. When I see a lady like this, I'm thinking, nice house, nice, looks like fruit in the bowl. I'm not thinking pity or feeling sorry or any kind of need there. But I might be wrong, huh? My eyes might be deceiving me. Mm -hmm. She, even though she's smart, could be going through a very tough time in her life. And this person here could be happy as a lark. But my eyes see things and tell me something different. And I don't like that. When Jesus looks at these two ladies, do you think he compares? Do you think he sees the same thing? Yeah. This young man, fine looking man, nice suit, bow tie, 
If you showed up at your front door to ask uh, to, to pick up your daughter for a date, you know, if the gentleman looked, you know, showed up like that, you might feel a little at ease. You know, this, this guy looks like a real gentleman, you know. Dress properly to pick up your daughter. You better treat her like a lady. Maybe this guy looks like he could. But that's what your eyes are seeing. And how about this? If this guy showed up on your front doorstep to pick up your daughter for a date, would you feel a little uneasy? Would you go, whoa, daughter, what are you thinking? See, your eyes are, and, and you know, when you compare the two, you don't know if this guy right here might be worth $12 billion and is the nicest guy on planet Earth, and this guy's a mass murderer. You don't know that by looking, do you? But yet, when you look, your eyes are telling you things that may or may not be true. Your eyes just see things that may not be there. And we do that on a daily basis. If this young man, ladies, when you were younger in the dating ages, and this young man, you met him someplace and he asked you out, your tendency would be, wow, that's a fine looking young man, you know? And uh, you might have a tendency to say yes, wouldn't you? I mean, I, I think he's a fine, I wish I looked like him. <laughs> now this, I don't get. I don't understand at all. The minute I see something like this, and I have seen people like this, my mind's just thinking a mile a minute. What's wrong with this person? What happened? Who is he? Why did he how did he get to this point? What, what's going on in his life? My eyes are just going through all sorts of, telling me what I'm seeing, and my thoughts are just going a mile a minute, and they may or may not be wrong. But when you compare the two, can you say to yourself, I feel and think the same things between these two guys. Can you do that? I can't. I'm sorry, dude. When I said this sermon this morning, I can't do that. I can't look at this gentleman and this gentleman and, and think the same. Like maybe they both, their hearts are hurting. Maybe they need something. Maybe they both need, well, they, I know they both need Jesus. But is there any difference between the two? They stand on common ground if you're looking at, at that side of it, that they both need Jesus. But I don't understand sometimes when I see something like this. My eyes just go nuts. I'm just going, wow, what's going on here? What, why? And you men, you see a young lady coming up to you and want to talk with you in your dating ages. Would you run away? This is a fine, fine looking young lady, very pretty dress, nice little smile. Your eyes are seeing something, and your thoughts are generated off of what you're seeing. This lady, if she walked up to you and wanted to talk with you, could you stand there and talk with her? Could you? And many of us I know could. But would it be different? Different than the first lady? When you compare these two, what you see, what are your thoughts? What are you thinking? Are you putting, in, putting them in the same category? Can you? This gentleman, when you look at, see what he has, see right there? That means a dedicated life to the military service. Those are ribbons, and each one stands for something that he's done, accomplished. And so you look at a gentleman like this, and you think to yourself, maybe honor, maybe respect, maybe commitment. Would you be afraid of this man if he showed up on your doorstep because of what you see? Probably not. I'd actually feel kind of safe, kind of, hey, this guy's really accomplished something. I'd like to get to know who he is. These are tattoos. And if this gentleman came in front of you, would you think honor, respect, commitment? What would be going through your mind with someone like this? Would you be afraid of this man if he showed up on your doorstep? I'll be honest with you, I kind of would. I mean, I know I'm, I'm tall and everything, but my eyes are seeing something, and I'm, my mind's going a mile a minute looking at something like this. I don't understand 
And so my eyes are seeing something and I'm putting him in a category. And when you look at the two, can you compare them and think the same thoughts when you see the difference between the two? See, our eyes are something that really, really kind of take us down some roads that maybe we don't want to go down. Oh, excuse me. So, what I want to do now is I want to look at some people that Jesus interacted with. The first one is Matthew. I'm going to read it here if you don't mind. It says, the call of Matthew made pe many people angry. For Christ to choose the tax collector as one of his closest companions was an offense against religious, social, and national customs. By appealing to prejudice, by the way, this is hard to see. By, uh, by appealing to prejudice, the Pharisees hoped to turn popular feeling against Jesus, but Jesus' choice created widespread interest among, guess who? The publicans. Do you know what publicans are? Publicans were the tax collectors in those days, and they were people that were despised, hated, shunned upon. They were the scum of the earth because they were collecting taxes for the Romans. And nobody wanted to pay taxes to the Romans. And so you have Jesus showing up at Matthew's place of work and saying, follow me. And what do you think the crowd thought about that? What were they seeing? They were seeing a, a, someone they hated and the possible Messiah inviting him to come walk with Jesus. What was Jesus seeing in Matthew? Was he seeing something different than the, than the people in the crowd saw? Yeah. They even went to Matthew's house for a feast. Now this really did perk up the interest of the other publicans because they were shunned so much. And then all of a sudden, this very popular man shows up and starts paying attention to another publican. Could you do that? If you were a Jew and you know what Matthew was, could you do that? We all know this story, Zacchaeus. He was another publican. He was the chief of publicans. And we know what he did also, he cheated. He said, Rome wants 50 denarii, and he would take 10 of it. And that was cheating. And he knew, everybody knew he did that too. But they couldn't do anything about it. Okay, I've got to take this off. Very uncomfortable. When I, when I first stood up and had this on my nose, what did you think? What, what were your eyes seeing? Laugh. Were you thinking, huh? Laugh. Yeah. Were you thinking, oh, that stupid Bob, what's he doing now? That's crazy. He's <laughs> goofy. <laughs> but the, th the reason I did that, very uncomfortable, but the reason I did that is because of this, is because your eyes, and maybe some of you were looking at that nose and concentrating so much on how stupid that looked and how dumb of a thing it was that you weren't even hearing what I was saying for maybe a little short period there. Because our eyes play such an important part of what we think and what we do. And sometimes, just like the Bible talks about our hearts, how it's very hard to trust your heart, can we trust our eyes all the time? No. No, you just can't. You just cannot. But Jesus took the time to stop and look up at another chief of the publicans, chief of the tax collectors, and say, Zacchaeus, come on down. I want to eat lunch with you. The, the whole crowd probably went, Ugh. He's going to eat with the tax collector and Zacchaeus too. Now, the one act that Jesus did by inviting himself to, over to his house to eat lunch did what to Zacchaeus? Changed his whole life, period. What did he do? He took all the money he stole and he paid back, didn't he? And he quit doing what he did before. He turned out 
to be somebody different than we thought he was. Jesus saw a man that was hurting. Jesus saw a man that had a heart that could be molded and changed to be more like his, like Jesus's. And so he took the time to talk to him. Nobody else would. And yet that one act of calling him down from the tree and saying, I'd like to eat with you, changed his whole life, period. And we would probably never have done something like that. At least I know I wouldn't have. We know this story too, Mary, Mary Magdalene. And I'd like to read this to you. Soon he was interrupted. A group... Let me move this over to where I need it here. A group of Pharisees and scribes approached him, dragging with them a terror-stricken woman. With hard, eager voices, they accused her of violating the seventh commandment. Pushing her into the presence of Jesus, they said, with a hypocritical display of respect, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses, in the law, commands us to that he, she should be stoned. But what do you say? Now, <coughs> they were right. It does talk about people getting caught in adultery. And Moses' law was you stone them. But they wanted to see what Jesus would do. They pretended reverence, veiled in deep laid plot to ruin Jesus. If he acquitted the woman, he might be charged with despising the law of Moses. If he declared her worthy of death, he could be accused by the Romans as one who assumed authority belonging only to them. Jesus looked upon the scene, the trembling victim in her shame, and the hard-faced dignitaries devoid of pity. His spirit of stainless purity shrank from the spectacle. This woman was guilty. This woman, according to Moses' law, deserved to be stoned. But... When they threw her at the feet of Jesus, what did Jesus see? What was the crowd seeing? They were seeing a prostitute. Has anybody ever met a prostitute? I have too. They're people just like you and I. They get up in the morning, they eat breakfast, they have lunch, they have dinner, they go to sleep at night. They just have a different occupation that is not a very popular one. But Jesus saw something totally different. I couldn't have. I would have been with the crowd saying, she's a prostitute. Where's the rocks? Where's the stone I can pick up? But Jesus saw something totally different. She saw, he saw a lady that was hurting in some place in her life, took the wrong, made some wrong choices, or maybe was forced into what she was doing, and he saw a heart that could be molded, that could be changed more like his. And it was really cool what he did when he started writing in the fan about the Pharisees who were standing next to him. What did Jesus see in her? What would you have seen in her? Jesus even had a way with children. You know, now granted, children, sometimes they're a nuisance. They just are. I'm sorry, they are. I've had some children, and, and they were a nuisance at times. Other times, they're just as cute as a button. And at times, they make too much noise. They run around and, and, and get in the way, and, and, uh, and the disciples thought that Jesus was way too important to have these children running around, getting in the way, and come up, causing commotion. Not very many times in the Bible do you see that Jesus is upset. But this is one of them. And he said to the disciples, and let me just read it. Some people brought children to Jesus for them to place his hands on them. But the disciples scolded them. Can you see the disciples saying, come on, get away. Jesus is busy. He's too important to look at your children right now. Get away. Get away. Go. You know, get out of here. And what did Jesus say? Jesus even, oh, excuse me. And when Jesus noticed this, he saw what the disciples were doing. When he noticed this, he was angry and said to the disciples, can you imagine? I mean, I would not want Jesus angry at me. But he got angry at the disciples for what they're doing. And he said, let the children come to me and do not stop them because the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Now, put yourself in the disciples' place. 
What were you seeing? You were seeing a commotion because the kids were getting in the way. These people were getting in the way. Jesus too busy to have you bring your children to Jesus and have them bless them. Get away. That, that's what the disciples were seeing. Did they see the people? Did they see the children? Did they stop and get down in their level and talk to them? No. They saw something totally different and they reacted to what they saw. These children are just in the way. And Jesus got angry and said, no. They're so important, I want you to know something. That the kingdom of God was made for little ones like this. What do you think the disciples thought at that point? Oh, did I mess up? I didn't even take time to look at these children and talk to them or talk to the families. I didn't even say, well, let me ask Jesus and see if he can, you know. I just tried to shoo them away. And many of us are like that. We, we, just, we just see things through our eyes that we react on and we shouldn't. I don't believe Jesus sees with his eyes. I believe he sees with his heart. Can we ever get to the place where we can only see others with our hearts? And I would answer that question, no, with one exception. Our eyes can, can be so deceiving to us, we need help. We really need help. For us to see others like Jesus, we have to go to him and ask him for help. And he helps us to see others like he does. I don't want to see others and make judgments anymore. I don't want my eyes to make decisions for me. I don't want to see people through my eyes any longer. I just don't. Because if I do, I judge and I form opinions. And I don't even know, the, and that's when I don't even know the person. I can just look and make judgments. I need help. I need to see others through Jesus' eyes, not mine. And I know that Jesus, when we do that, he only wants one thing for us, just one thing. And he came here to make sure that could happen if we choose it. He wants to take us home. He wants a relationship forever in his home. Not here on this earth, but in his home. He wants to help us see others like he sees them. And... When we do, he will say this. Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. I just can't imagine what heaven is going to be like, but I cannot wait. I'm just so eager. The older I get, the more I realize that this is not our home. And we have to get over some of these issues that we have on this earth to be able to have Jesus tell us this so we can live with him forever. Don't look at people and judge them. Don't look at situations and think you know what's going on. Don't push the little kids out of the way because you think they're being a nuisance. Stop and talk to them. Reach out to these people. Do, in other words, do what Jesus did. He stopped and interacted with them. He found out what their problems were. He asked them. He took time with them. And when you do that, people will respond. Even to some of the pictures we saw, some of the pictures that just really kind of turn my stomach sometimes, but, but yet, I know that if I take the time and ask for his help to talk to this person and find out what's going on in their lives, and maybe help them in some way, or they might in turn be helping me, just talking to them. We need that. We need Jesus to help us to see differently. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Father, we don't want to see through our eyes because we just, we can't trust them. We, we, we make so many judgments and decisions by what we see. We need help to see like you see. We need help that you can help us see others like you see them. Father, let us each time we see someone that might look different, smell different, talk different, act different, that we don't see them through our eyes, but we have a little prayer right then and there, that can we see this person through your eyes? Thank you for helping us with such a, a thing that we have to deal with here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.